The solution was to microchip each lizard so it could then be scanned, just like your supermarket shopping, with a barcode reader on the end of a pole. This clever use of technology revealed what looked like a jumble of lizards on a pile of rocks to be actually a little lizard family with young that stay with their parents for life. I'm sure that there are going to be many other um, complex social organisations that will be uncovered in those species if we just simply take the time to look at them. Um, but it's just the time and the patience to, to watch them and, and watching a lizard is um, very unrewarding because uh, they, will, they, will, uh, they will come out and bask, um, sit by a bush um, and if they see you there then they'll decide they're not going to do very much for the rest of the day. To find out just what sleepy lizards get up to when no one's around, Mike's team use a rather bizarre device they call a waddleometer. It may look a little odd, but it records a lizard's GPS coordinates, counts its steps and even notes whether it's in sun or shade, all without troubling the lizard and without anyone having to be there. So you think that's probably the secret world of the lizard, oh, which absolutely. no human being has ever seen, because if, it, if a human being is there, the lizard won't behave that way. Um, I'm sure that's part of it. It's, you know, the uncertainty principle. The closer you get to watch something, the less normally it's behaving. Um, and so it's only by getting these re remote and, and new technologies that allow us to uh, really get into the secret world of the lizards that we can find these really amazing things that they're doing. How extraordinary. One of their latest techniques uses miniature cameras which they use to study a very special lizard that we were also particularly keen to film. It's so rare that it was thought to be extinct for over 30 years until it was thrust back into the public eye when it was discovered in some very unusual circumstances. There was a group of biologists who were doing a standard biological survey they were just coming back to town to pick up supplies and just on the road they saw a dead brown snake. Now most people just wouldn't even look at it because they're so common around here, but these were dedicated biologists. They stopped and had a look at it, they noticed there was a bulge in it, they thought let's see what it's been eating, open it up and there was this, uh, this lizard that no one had seen for 30 years, uh, the pygmy blue tongue lizard. How lovely. No, I dare say it wasn't all that lovely when they actually saw it. Miniature cameras have produced images that are slowly helping to build up a comprehensive picture of the life of these rare little creatures. Their burrows are more than just homes. They're also hiding places where they can wait in ambush for spiders and crickets. But they don't seem too keen on ants. They also serve as bolt holes when danger approaches. Despite all this work, Mike's team had never recorded their life underground. So we were able to help with a little of our own technology and record the first ever pictures of a pygmy blue tongue family. Three babies alongside their mother in their little hole. But all this technology, ingenious though it is, is no substitute for years of dedicated observation. Mike's approach of simply driving for miles across the Australian outback is very fruitful and you'll see lots of other things as well as lizards. Up here is just a, a, a wonderful place oh, for lizards. Yeah. Boy, kangaroos. Eastern grey, beautiful, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, you won't catch a lizard doing that. <laughs> Oh, look, there's a pair just down there. It turned out that Mike had spotted two old friends. Yes, um, here's the male and the female. This is uh, 1172 and 3344. I think they've been together for about 10 years, this pair. Really? Uh, we've got some other pairs that have been together for over 20 years. Um, they stay together during the springtime and uh, they mate towards the end of the spring and then they separate, but the next year the same two lizards will find them back together again, usually in the same place along this road too. <laughs>
Aren't they terrific? They use their tongues to um, pick up uh, chemical signals and you can see they're actually sensing each other at the moment. I think that's really very touching. I said it's a risky business. <laughs> With obsessive dedication and ever-advancing technology, who knows what Mike and his team will uncover about the secret lives of sleepy lizards. Come on. 